there, I am here with Maria Koroleva, two-time Olympian and all-around amazing young woman <laughs> who I've had the opportunity to speak with. And I just wanted to have the opportunity to ask Maria a couple of questions on what it was like to prepare for the Olympics and what you learned, maybe some challenges that you've had preparing for the Olympics, but now that you're in real life, I shouldn't say real life, but now that you're out into the working world and having a career, maybe what you've learned from being an Olympian and some of the things that you've learned and maybe some of the challenges that you're experiencing and also maybe how mental toughness is has helped you as an athlete and then will help you going forward. So first question is what when you decided to, you know, you were in the London Olympics first, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then that went pretty well, but you decided and you made this very important decision to go for it again and go to another Olympics. Can you explain a little bit about your decision and did you have total certainty when you when you had planned to do that second Olympics? Yeah, so actually I never I never planned to do two Olympics. I always thought, you know, I would do London in 2012 and that would be it. And then I would retire and, you know, get a real, real people job as I like to call it. Um, but after London, I just had this, this kind of fire lit under me and I, I wanted to keep going. I wanted to get back into it. I wanted to see how far I could push myself and, and my body. And the year after the Olympics, I was ready to, you know, I was done with school. I was ready to come back to the national team. And I went to the national team trials and I actually didn't make it. So here I was, you know, a 23 year old coming off of an Olympic games. You would think, you know, of course they would, they, you know, the national team would want me. And they actually said, you know, we don't, we don't want you. If we think you're too old at 23 years old, we want to focus on this, you know, this younger group of girls. And for me, it was really a decision of, okay, do I stop swimming? Is this, is this kind of the writings on the wall and I should retire and, you know, start my professional career or do I give it one more chance? And something inside me just said, you know, just try, try one more time. Everybody around me, my parents, my family, even my coaches were like, look, like, I think this, you know, you, you've accomplished a lot already. You don't, you don't need to do a second Olympics, but something inside me just didn't, it didn't sit well with me to just stop right there and then. So there was absolutely no guarantee of me even making the national team again, let alone make the Olympic duet again. So I went back to my home club, I swam there for a year, and I came back to the national team trials the year after, and I thought, you know, okay, if I really don't make it this time, if they really don't want me, then that'll be, you know, that'll be the end for me. And I came back the year after, I made all the improvements that they had wanted, that they thought that I couldn't do, you know, they wanted me to lose weight, they wanted me to, you know, to be more flexible, like all of these things. So I came back the year after and I totally swept, you know, blew everyone out of the water and won the trials. So, and then the year after I was named to the Olympic duet and that was kind of my ticket to, to my second Olympics. So there absolutely was no guarantee, you know, that they would want me back, but I don't know. For me, it's like I had this goal and I really wanted, to, you know, I really wanted to do it. and. I wanted to give it my absolute best shot. I knew the odds were maybe stacked up against me, but I, I wanted to, to do everything that I possibly could to to get to that goal. Um, and it was tough, you know, hearing that criticism that like, you know, you're never gonna improve, you're, you've, you're, you've kind of like outgrown the sport, there's no way you're ever gonna get better. Like, it was really hard to hear, you know, of course you're in tears and, and whatnot. And I remember I told myself, okay, you can cry and you can be angry and you can be really sad for two days, 48 hours. You know, and I was really angry and I was talking to people and I was complaining about what had happened. But then I was like, okay, but after those two days, you can't sulk anymore. You know, you the, you have to pick yourself up and, and do something with yourself. You know, either you go a different direction or you try again and you, you know, you try to, to, to make it work. So, and that is the true definition of being resilient. That is, in other words, allowing yourself the space to be upset, but then choosing to move yeah. forward. Yeah. And I think that is really a true and important reflection of life as well and in sports and as far as in your career, life in general, that there are no guarantees. 
and sometimes like with you going into your second Olympics, you knew in your heart and in your gut that is something that you needed and wanted to do. And I think it's important for all of you out there and all of you listening to understand that you know what to do. I believe that you know what to do and you know it in your heart. You need to give yourself some space to understand what it is that you want and why you care so deeply and then believe believe in yourself that it can that it can come true and believe that you can make progress because now Maria has some amazing amazing slash scary um, good scary opportunities coming up and I think it's going to be a challenge and very exciting to think about that in the same way that there are no guarantees but we do know what's right for ourselves and how is being an Olympian going to help you make that decision your next big life decision mm -hmm. yeah I mean I got some uh, some some big and yeah possibly scary things coming up um, I think for me going through that experience with my second Olympics it really really showed me that there are going to be risks that you have to take in your life and you know, I never want to look back and say, gosh, I wish I would have just, just taken that risk and taken, taken that leap. Um, and to know, again, you know, even if there are no guarantees, I always look back at what I have, what I've already accomplished and then say, you know, I don't just want to stop there. I want to go a little bit further. I don't want all that work to be for nothing, even, even if it is a risk. So really taking all of all everything that I've done in the past and just making making that leap of faith. It's almost you know it's, it's always faith, um, and knowing that if you put everything you have and you know you commit to something 100%, then that's that's all you can really ask of yourself, regardless of what the outcome is. And I think if you really put your heart and soul into into something, then you're always going to be happy with yourself. If I feel like if you if you only go in halfway and then it doesn't work out in the end, then you'll always think, gosh, like I wish I would have just given it a little bit more. But if you gave it your all and it still doesn't work out, I mean, I feel like you can't not be happy with yourself knowing that you you really did everything you could. Like there's nothing else that you could have you could have put out there. Yeah. So my question for all of you watching is what is your Olympics coming up? And it doesn't have to be something Huge. It can be something big. It could be repairing or strengthening a relationship. It could be a different career path. It could be getting a raise in your current career, or it could be taking a big trip. I don't know, but I want you really to think about what is your Olympics? Why do you care so deeply? And what steps are you going to take in the next one to two weeks? And I hope this special time with Maria has helped you out because I admire you so much for everything that you've done and all that you are embarking on now. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. I hope Maria has inspired you. Again, think about what is your Olympics and why you care so deeply and think about what you're going to do to start making progress. Thanks so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you next time.